Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review, and I'm here today to talk to you about Catastrophe Season 2. So, remember when I said in my last review of this series that, like, the first season ended in a way, and then when it started in the second season, it blew me away because I wasn't expecting it, but I was also mad but happy at the same time. See, this is what happened. So, we remember, okay, last season, they're in the hotel on honeymoon, and they argue and they break up and then she comes back and she's like my water broke so we see sharon pregnant in ice cream at the start of the series and i'm all like wait a minute her water broke and she supposed to have a baby i'm like okay maybe it was a false pregnancy that happens or maybe she peed on herself something like that you know and so i'm thinking okay everything's like she's still pregnant everything's fine whatever and so they're talking, they're talking, they get horny, and they start doing it. And as they're doing it, all of a sudden, this little kid comes running into the room, a little boy, he's about two years old, and they have to stop doing it because, you know, he's watching them. It's their son. I'm like, well, hold up. No, they didn't, but they did. They jumped two years in the future. <laughs> the start of the series. I was like, no, man. I wanted to see what happens at the end of like the last season and stuff. So I'm like, oh, so yeah. Things worked out for them. In two years, you know, they you know, they had their little boy. She's pregnant again with a little girl, and they're living together and they're married and stuff. I'm like, oh man, I wanted to see like everything happen. You know, not just like rush it, but it was a cool twist. I did not see that happening or coming. So the first episode, they're like, I'm about to welcome the baby and stuff. And so the baby's, um, well, she goes into labor and then she has the baby. And then they have like a little, kind of like a, a after baby shower type thing. Um, and everybody's there. The friends, the family, and um carrie fisher she flew to england to be in that episode and so they're all there and sharon cannot get along with rob's mom she is unbearable <laughs> and she's been there for three weeks and she wants to stay longer and stuff and so sharon cannot take it sharon is getting stressed and everything and so uh, it's just like the Carrie Fisher character is really getting on her nerves. It's even getting on like Rob's nerves at one point. So Sharon is totally letting like um, Rob's mom have it. And Rob is like, whoa, 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 you don't talk to my mom that way. And then he goes off on Sharon. And they have a huge argument where he tells her, because see, one problem with the thing is that nobody can pronounce the baby girl's name. Sharon decided to give it a very like traditional strong Irish name Marion or something like that and nobody in the show can like, pronounce it and Rob's all like I have a daughter whose name I can't even pronounce <laughs> so they had like a huge argument but then things get like turned a little bit scary because Sh Sharon is starting to stress out big time and Rob cannot find their son at all he wandered off outside with the mom and that totally freaked them out but then Sharon's dad is kind of acting a little weird like he's acting like you know he having like Alzheimer's or something well eventually Rob's mom does leave after that episode and this episode this season is really interesting it deals with a lot of arguments and a lot of infidelity see the Chris character and his wife they have now separated and have um they're getting to the point where they want to get a divorce chris remember i said there's something interesting about chris he tells rob i think in the second episode it is that he has fantasies about doing women that have shillelaghs basically he's into drag queens and transsexuals but he's not quite sure, but he just fantasizes about it. He wants to do it. So that's part of the reason that's been bugging him in the last season. And so he decides to pursue this by going to like a club that has like tons of gay men and drag queens, an LGBT club, basically. Then he starts to like 
call up like a sex worker and stuff. Now, as for his wife, she's moving on. She's found for herself another man. They're going out on a date and everything. I will say what's really interesting. I think it was the fourth or fifth episode. The fourth one, I believe it was. Is that it decided to focus on the recurring cast instead of the main two cast members. The two main cast members are there, but they just talk and don't really do nothing. All of the drama is with the recurring cast. That was interesting. And that was nice to give them some screen time because there's only six episodes in like a season. So that was really touching of them. Well, by like the fourth episode or so, or third, um, three years has now passed. So it's been three years since he's been living there. They've been married and their son is now three. And we found out some interesting stuff that happened in between the first two years. Turns out, Rob became an alcoholic in those two years. Him and Sharon almost broke up. Their son is premature when he was born. And Sharon wants to go back. She stopped working. And she wants to go back to work. So Rob is all like, yeah, that'll be like, great. Why don't you go back to work and I'll be a stay-at-home dad and everything. So when she goes back to her old job and she's talking and stuff, she starts to have like a bit of a nervous breakdown. Talking about how she misses like living with um being with her kids and this and that and she tells all the son like illnesses and my god there are like a lot and it would have been a lot more powerful if they would have like spent time on the son's prematurity and stuff but they kind of gloss over really fast in that big rundown and, and it would have been a lot better to see but they don't and plus since this whole season was just about like them arguing them and all this other stuff, it, they could have had time to like do some stuff with the son, but they don't. And so her boss is kind of like, you know, you need to keep taking time off. You're not ready to go back to work. One of the things about sharing this season is that the whole post, what is it called? Like post pregnancy thing is really affecting her. Like she's tired of her boobs leaking. Um, what is it? She's not bonding at all with her new daughter. And it takes her a good long while to do it. But it happens in like the second episode. But for her it happened in like months and months. Uh, I think four months to be exact. She couldn't bond with her daughter for like four whole months and stuff. And it's just like her body's starting to look different down there. And it's really getting on her nerves. And like then there's something that happens with Rob at his job. That okay here's the thing. Rob is still at his job and his boss just like thinks he's like the best because he does really good work. Well, Bob has like this, I think, not necessarily an assistant, but some woman who works there. She's really gorgeous. She's really young. And she always gives Bob kind of like these looks when he passes by and he kind of like looks at her back. It gets to the point when he looks at her, he gets turned on and he just smacks it in the bathroom and everything. He does not tell Sharon at all, but he tells his American friend. I forget his American friend's name. Um, and so, like, one day him and that woman was talking. And she's all like, I see the way you look at me. Would you like to meet me in the hotel and I can do this to your body and stuff? And he's like, no, 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 I'm married and blah, blah, blah. And then, so, like, then, like, another day she comes back and talks to him. And I think she tries to, like, apologize, something like that. I can't remember what. But then he's all like, look, if I wasn't married, I'll be doing this and this and that to your body. Well, she decides she don't like that talk. Plus, she don't like getting rejected. So she decides to go to HR and say he has been sexually harassing her and stuff, even though she's the one who started it first. And so he gets upset and he kind of makes things a whole lot worse by having these big like outbursts. It basically tells him like he quits and this and that and or something about he's going home or something like that and he's not going to deal with it and like and just, he just kind of makes things a little bit all worse by like bursting out like that so when he goes home he has to tell sharon that hey um because she tells him she's not going back to work so he's kind of like crap because you know he don't have a job no more so basically, yeah, he's on like temporary leave and stuff like that. So they do like an investigation and she's furious, but she's not just furious at that. See, 
earlier this season, Sharon's brother, Fogel, I think his name is, he wants to borrow some money. So Rob decides to be nice and gives it to him. I think it was 1,500 pounds. And Sharon does not know. And then when Fogel was supposed to return the money, well, he does it. And instead, he kind of like gambles it away and all this other stuff. So Rob's pissed and he has to tell Sharon. But Sharon breaks the news to him first kind of a little bit because she wants to know where all the money in the bank went. So when she finds out that he gave the money to her brother and finds out why he can't go back to work, she gets pissed and she kicks him out the house. Like she, she's that furious. So he goes to live with his American friend. His American friend this entire season has been partying up way too much, constantly with other women. He likes this one lady, but he lied about being sober. And we see in one episode, he's constantly doing drugs, like left and right. And then he says that, you know what, I'm going to be clean. So that's when my friend's helping me smoke up the rest of these drugs. But then he finds some crack on the, um, in a bag. So he's like, oh, well, got to get rid of it. But he gets rid of it by snorting it. When Rob goes back, see, Rob doesn't want to stay with him no more because of that dude's partying ways and video game ways and this and that. But when Rob goes back to um, talk to him, dude has OD'd and Rob is freaking out. So he gives him mouth to mouth and the moment he does that, vomit goes into Rob's mouth and it's chunks everywhere and it's gross. <laughs> so nasty. But he gets him back to the hospital where he saves the dude's life and stuff. Sharon is still pissed at Rob um, because she doesn't necessarily believe that the woman hit on him first, but the people told him, told her at HR that you know he did say that if he was single, he would do this to that woman's body. She's furious, so she goes out to a club with her one friend, who's her bridesmaid from the first season. And then this is where, in the first review, I said. Sharon is not necessarily a good person. See, she she's not even drunk, to tell you the truth. I don't even think she's been drinking. But this one younger guy was flirting on her, so she decided she's been drinking. No, she was drinking a little bit. Yeah, she was tipsy, and so she goes upstairs with him. And it's kind of like on the roof. But when we see her next, she's completely laid on the floor, and her clothes are all still on. And she's in some kind of a room. Don't know what kind of room she's in, but she leaves because she's not sure what happened. And so she thinks absolutely nothing has happened. She goes about her day, and then she gets a weird text from that guy and stuff. And the text was so weird, she calls her friend up. She's all like, I need you to explain everything that happened to me last night. And she tells her, oh yeah, you went upstairs with like your guy friend. And she's like, but only for a minute, right? She's like, no, for a whole hour. Sharon's like, ah, oh, crap. So she runs to like the pharmacy and she gets something known as Plan B, the uh, morning after pill. And so when at this point in time, her and Rob get back together. And so when he goes to give the delivery guy the piece of dude the money, the delivery dude knows there's a receipt in the money, so he gives it to Rob. And Rob looks at the receipt, and it says, like, Plan B. And so, like, he just goes back, and Sharon just kind of be a little snobby. And he just kind of looks at her. And she's like, what? And right before he's finna talk, the camera cuts off. He doesn't know. See, when Sharon was so upset at him, she literally kept complaining, talking about she giving up everything for Rob. But she has not. He has given up everything for her, but she complains about how her body no longer looks the way it does, and that's what she gave up, and this, this, and that. So she's being totally selfish, and so then he's upset. He he says, "Cause see, right? Okay, so here's the thing: when they was talking about like the kids and this and that, they was talking, and then they get horny and they do it in a park. So they did it early that morning." And then the afternoon is when she called her friend up, and that's when she took the plan B. And then that night is when uh, he found out. So he's upset. He he thinks he knows for sure that she cheated on him because he hasn't been messing with her stuff for that one time in the park. 
And but then it's kind of like he is in and and one part in the back of his mind. He's probably like, well, she probably doesn't want to have a kid with me no more. So, yeah, he is furious with her because she cheated and she's such a hypocrite. Like he never cheated on her. He just like he didn't even like flirt with that lady. Like when that lady started flirting with him at first, at first he told his boss, I quit. But then she tells him, well, I don't accept your resignation. And so like, that's that's how far he's willing to go. If a woman flirts with him, he will just straight up quit his job and just leave. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't even touch this woman. Like all he just said, you know, if he wasn't married, then he'll be doing this and that to her. Basically him being single. But then here comes Sharon and she was barely tipsy. Well, she, she must have been hammered. She doesn't even remember what happened that night. And so... She went to like a singles bar that like cool off. Like she knew something probably could have happened, you know what I'm saying? And she went with her one friend who's always drunk and stuff happens. And so it's like I just couldn't believe she cheated on him and she tries to play it all off and doesn't even try to tell him. And the whole thing really never gets resolved for the most part. Like you have to see from the third season. But it's just like, just the way they handle it was just kind of like, no, it makes me not even like Sharon no more, you know? I just could not believe she did that. And it's basically, it shows the kind of person she is. Like, that's how she met Rob. They got drunk, they did it, they got pregnant and stuff. And it's just kind of like, I just could not believe. And she was a whole hypocrite about the whole thing. And then I remember, like, she even asked him, I think, before they did in the park, like, have you ever cheated on me and stuff? No, no, no. Oh, she asked him. I think that's she asked him the third season. I can't remember. But anyway, but yeah, I just could not believe she's a hypocrite and everything. And that she did that. And it's just like, other than the arguments and stuff, Rob has been really good to her. I mean, he left his home and his mom and friends from America to be with her in a land that he's, like, he's visited, but he's not really all that familiar with. And it's just like, I just could not believe it. But that's basically all what really happens in that season. Like, just, just this, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, not that much. But it's just kind of like, I do like the first season a bit more. Um, and it's interesting. It's like, in two years they've been together... They doing all this argument and stuff. So it kind of makes you wonder, do they really not even like each other? And the only reason why they're together is because they got knocked up, you know? But yeah, some more interesting stuff, let's just say, happens in the third season. Now, one thing I did leave out. When his friend OD'd and everything, and he was upset, he went to a hotel to stay because he couldn't stay there. And while he was there... We see him in the hotel just drinking bottles of like alcohol. No, this happened before. This happened before his friend OD. Yeah, he was in the hotel because he just couldn't stay there no more with his friend. His friend was doing drugs and playing video games. He didn't want his kids to be there. So he goes to the hotel and he just starts drinking liquor. And like I said before, he had an alcoholic problem. Um, in between the first and the second season that we saw that did not see off camera and stuff So it's kind of like he's back to doing that now. It gets worse in the third season him and his drinking Oh, and they also introduced a new character. She's like the babysitter with purple hair Alrighty. Well, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye